Hello and welcome to another episode of Prague's Tour Guide. My name is Patrick and in today's video we'll focus on the Vyshehrad Castle. What you see behind me is just the outer fortification. The actual fortress is a little bit further, so I suggest we go see it. Follow me. Now on my right side you can see the leftover of the 14th century fortification that was built by Charles IV. There used to be a massive gate over here that was called Špička and this is what's left of it. So now we reach the actual fortress. Behind me you can see the Leopold's gate which is an entrance into the Vyshehrad fortress. There used to be a drawbridge and a, uh, and a moat over here. You can tell because there are these two holes up there where the chain used to go into. Anyway, uh, let's go on the walls, which is the main thing what to do in Vyshehrad, you know, that's the best thing to do. There are beautiful views from the walls. Yeah, by the way, I've never seen this many people here. It's probably because it's the last day before the COVID restrictions. You know, they, are, uh, they start tomorrow and so people want to take advantage of the fact that they can still walk around freely. So now we will walk on the walls and we'll actually do one big circle. So we walk on the walls all the way around and we'll finish over here. So guys, let's go. Now over here you can see a rotunda of St. Martin from 11th century. Rotunda is a type of church, very simple. It looks like this, you know, just one room inside. And this is how churches looked back in 11th century. There's only a few of them left in the whole country, in the Czech Republic. So Vyshehrad Castle was founded in the 10th century. Uh, then in, in 11th century, Vratislav II, the ch first Czech king, he moved his seat from the Prague Castle to Vyshehrad. So for about 80 years, it became the seat of the Czech kings. In 14th century, Charles IV decided to turn Vyshehrad into a fortress. Then later on, in 1420s, the Hussite army, they burned it to the ground and it laid in ruins for about 200 years until after the Thirty Years' War in 1650s, they decided to build it into the current shape. So the way it looks today, it's from 1650s and it, it's a Baroque fortress. It was the southest point of the historical center of Prague and it was protecting Prague from the south. That was its purpose. Hey yeah, guys, and from here we have a beautiful view on Nuselsky Bridge. Uh, however, we can't really see how massive it is from here. So how about we have a closer look? Yeah, let's go. So now we're standing below Nuselsky Bridge. And as you can see, it is enormous. Uh, 500 meters long, 42 meters tall. It is one of the biggest bridges in the Czech Republic. It was built in 1973. And what's interesting is that there is a highway going on top and a subway going through the middle of the bridge. So it's multifunctional. It's really an amazing piece of architecture from the communist period. So guys, we're back in Vyshehrad. And as you can see behind me, you know, Vyshehrad is actually the southest point of the historical center of Prague. So there used to be a wall, there still is a wall actually, from 14th century. And that separates the new town on the left side, which is part of the 14th century historical Prague, and Nusle on the right side. Now Nusle grew mostly in the 19th century. It was an industrial neighborhood. And if you look behind Nuselsky Bridge, up on the hill, that's the beginning of Vinohrady, which means vineyard in Czech. And that's where Charles IV founded vineyards. They were outside of the city walls. And today it's one of the nicest residential areas in Prague. Hey guys, and here opens up a beautiful view on the entire city center of Prague. We have the Prague Castle in the back with the St. Vitus Cathedral. That's that black church in the middle of the castle. That's currently the seat of the Czech president. Another interesting building is the white one. That's part of the hospital on the Charles Square. Very big hospital right in the center of Prague. Then we have the yellow church. That's the church of St. Apollinaire. And next to it is a maternity hospital. That's that brick building, you know, it, it's from 19th century. 
and it's a maternity hospital, one of the biggest ones in Prague. So this is why people come to Vyšehrad, to enjoy these beautiful views on the city center. Especially on a day like today, it's just perfect. Yeah, Vyšehrad is a very popular place for dates as well. You know, if you come here in the evening, there are a lot of couples walking around on the walls. So everything you see between the Prague Castle and Vyšehrad is 14th century historical Prague. You know, in 14th century Prague was the third largest city in the world after Rome and Constantinople, but only by area, not by citizens. Now what's interesting, if you look at the walls, you see that there's actually an inclination. You see, it's not 90 degrees angle, but it's actually a little bit more. And that's to bounce off the, the cannonballs that would be shot at the fortress, so they would bounce off the walls. It would diverge the power of the cannonball, not hitting it at 90 degrees, but actually at a higher angle. So now we're going down and we'll be heading toward the cemetery. So guys, now we're entering the famous Vyšehrad cemetery. This is where some of the most famous Czech people lie, where they are buried. Now the first grave I'd like to point out over here, is just behind a corner. And it's a grave of a most famous Czech classical music composer, Antonín Dvořák. He's buried here with his family. Now Antonín Dvořák, his most famous symphony is the New World Symphony, which he wrote when he was working in New York and he was inspired by the Native Americans' music. And it's his absolute best work. So guys, now I will show you a grave of one of the most famous Czech football players. His name is Josef Bitsan, and he's regarded as the greatest goal scorer of all time. In his career, he scored over 800 goals, which is more than Cristiano Ronaldo, for example. He played for Slavia Prague. So guys, at the end of this alley, there is a big tomb with just a lot of famous people in one tomb. It's called Slavin, so let's check it out. You know, the idea of the Vyšehrad Cemetery is... There was a cemetery here since 13th century already. However, in the 19th century, they got an idea to make this a national cemetery. So they start to bury accomplished Czech people here. For example, there were, you know, actors, there were musicians, there were politicians, there were war heroes, scientists, and so on. So today, Vyš Vyšehrad is really one of the most beautiful and the most prestigious cemeteries in, in the Czech Republic. Yeah, a lot of famous people are buried in Vyšehrad. This guy, he won a Nobel Prize, for example, Mr. Hedovsky. Anyway, what we see ahead of us is called Slavin, and it's the most famous tomb in Vyšehrad Cemetery. It was made at the end of 19th century, and the idea was just to bury a bunch of famous people all in one tomb. They're buried underneath the stairs, and we can see their names over there. So František Křižík, for example, or Josef Václav Myslbeck, famous sculptor, or Emma Destinová, very famous Czech opera singer. Yeah, I like the inscription here. Up, up there it says, Ať zemřeli ještě mluví. Although they died, they still speak, which means that their deeds speak for them, even after life. And now we can have a look at Bedřich Smetana, another very famous uh, Czech classical music composer. So he is buried here. Just like Beethoven, 
near the end of his life he was deaf and he still composed. His most famous song is called Moldau, Vltava, like the name of the river in Prague. So guys, let's go see the church now, which is called Church of St. Peter and Paul. Yeah, guys, and over here we can see a beautiful Basilica of St. Peter and Paul. Originally founded in the 11th century, rebuilt in a neo-Gothic style in the 19th century. And it is one of the most important churches in the Czech Republic. Now this church is so important because it comes under the competence of the Pope directly, not the Czech Archbishop. Anyway, it's really beautiful inside, so let's have a look inside. Over here we have a bust of Bratislav II. He's the first Czech king and the founder of the Basilica. So guys, let's have a drink in Rio. It's a very popular restaurant, uh, especially among the politicians now. So guys, on the left we can see four statues from Josef Václav Misselbeck, one of the most famous Czech sculptors. And these statues used to be on one bridge downtown called Palacki Bridge, but now they're here. Anyway, let's check out one really cool viewpoint, which is not far from here, about 50 meters this way. So guys, now we reach the viewpoint. You can see several bridges going over the Vatava River and the Prague Castle in the distance. What a view! So guys, from this viewpoint we can see the southern part of the city center. This area is called Podoli. Now down there, there's a yacht club. So a lot of people have boats in Prague. And if you look on the left, you can see a few high rises. And locals call this Prague's Manhattan sometimes, uh, because those are the only high rises in Prague. There are tough restrictions on the height of the buildings. So you, you cannot build over this height. And this building right below, that's a maternity hospital. It was originally built, well, as a hospital, a private one, very expensive one, but then the communists in the 50s turned it into a maternity hospital. And today, this is where most people in Prague are born. 5,000 per year, approximately. Anyway, let's finish the circle, so we'll continue on the walls. Yeah, by the way, my son was born in this maternity hospital right below, 8th of August, 2020. His name is Oliver. Yeah, just behind the corner, there's a cool playground for kids. So guys, as you can see, we're on the same spot where we started our tour. We did one big circle on the walls. So this is the end of our short tour of the Vyšehrad Castle. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, as always, if you'd like to book a tour, uh, either a virtual one or in person with me or one of my colleagues, you can go to our website, lucytours.com. You'll find the link below the video. And also, if you would like to get notified of all our new videos, you can subscribe to our channel. It would make us very happy. So uh, thanks again, and I'll see you on our next tour. Take care, guys.